Well, greetings and welcome to our Bible study time. We are continuing our look at Abram, and today we're going to eavesdrop on uh, God, uh, God's meditations. If you remember, uh, the angels of, of the Lord and Lord uh, showed up at uh, Abram's tent, and there was this um, time with Sarah. And uh, now the, the men are, are walking off, or the, the angels of the Lord are, are walking off, and we're, we're getting a, a little bit of the, uh, uh, we're, in, a, in a sense, what's happening is the scriptures are letting us hear God's dialogue, monologue, however you want to put it, but that the, the heart and the mind of God in this. And this is, uh, many scholars would say, is, is a very precious moment, a very um, incredible moment to, to be allowed to to um, eavesdrop on uh, the Lord's conversation, so to speak. Uh, you know, the circumstances of this are kind of unusual opportunities for us as followers to to hear. And, and after the uh, the strange events that were described in in, um, in, uh, in last week's time, where Abram played host to uh, the angels but uh, and also the, the divine manifestation of, of the Lord himself. The Lord and, and his entourage of, of uh, angelic messengers get ready to leave. We're told that they are, they're in route to a, a personal inspection of the Jordan Valley area in uh, uh, preparation for, a, a, I guess we would say, a dramatic uh, visitation to the cities and the plains there. Abram accompanies them and, he, and, and is escorting them down the road um, and is serving them. Uh, he, he just wants to continue to, I guess, to be a part. Obviously, he's recognizing something magnificent here is going on, and he doesn't want to, to let go of it here. And it's in this contact, context that the Lord uh, thinks out loud for all of us readers uh, through the generations here to overhear. And what we're about to read are the, the, the very meditations, think about this, the very meditations of the heart and mind of, of the Lord, uh, the essence of, of his divine plan for returning his creation uh, to a, a garden-like state. And so don't read these words only as a historical significant. These words are for today. Uh, for therefore our lifetime as well as for the lifetime of our children and our children's children. They tell us uh, about a hope that, that lies within the promises of God. And here are the, the meditations that the, the, the Lord has on his heart. Um, the Holy One said, Will I hide from Abraham what I do? Seeing that Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may enjoin his children and his household after him, and that they may keep the way of the Holy One to do righteousness and justice to the end that the Holy One may bring to Abraham, that which he has spoken of him. And this is Genesis 18, it's verses 18 through 20. Abram is not just a man who lived a long time ago. In the Lord's eyes, Abram is, is every descendant of, of uh, Abraham's uh, natural, his, his children, and, and, and his engrafted children. So that's us Christians as well that, that uh, are not called Jews. Um, uh, we, we've been adopted. Um, and and, so, and if, so these words are for anyone who... You remember that Hebrew word, Shema, hears, listens, um, is obedient, walks in the way of the Lord. Um, the, the, the children, the generations that uh, have a, a Shema lifestyle, that these words are for them. So it, it's important that, that uh, Horace asks, what is the, the secret of, of Abraham, the, the secret of this friendship with God? Because God is sharing so much, wouldn't we desire that as well. So how do we come into this friendship like Abraham has, has done? Well, let's think on, on this a, a little bit. Uh, so what are Abraham's secrets? Uh, well, according to the, the meditations of the Lord, the, the secret is kind of a, a threefold or three foundational aspect of, of the relationship between God and, and Abraham. One is a willingness to be intimate with God. Abraham um, 
secret involves a hunger for and a willingness to receive intimate knowledge of, of the Holy One. Uh, the, the Lord said, for I have known him, and the, the Hebrew word translated as, as known, uh, yada tiv, um, is a form of a Hebrew verb, uh, yada, um, and if you remember some of our lessons way back, uh, yod, resh, ain, are uh, the three letters there, uh, the Hebrew alphabet, these, these words um, involve intimacy. It's a it's like an intimacy between a husband and a wife. I guess that's kind of why we're called bride, the, the bride of Christ. It, it's a spiritual union, obviously, that comes through close interpersonal um, interactions over a period of time, spending time with God. We, we, we've, uh, we've been studying Abram and, and Abraham and, and his interactions with the Lord for a while now and have uh, really just um, begun to see see this this strong uh, this deep walk we, we we've already seen abraham um, have uh, uh, five direct contacts with god or god encounters and uh, we've seen the, the god working in abram's life behind the scenes and in, in, in the world in the the famine of, of canaan and the plagues of egypt uh, the war in the, the plain of, of the jordan and his relationship uh in his relationships, thinking about the, the separation from um, his father's household in Ur and then his separation from Lot. Um, yada, that, that word you see, is, is not something that happens overnight. It, it's not, um, it doesn't happen a few minutes at the altar. It doesn't happen instantaneously um, at baptism. Uh, yada requires a day-by-day -day growth process uh, of uh, I guess you would say of fits and starts, of successes and failures, of laughter and tears. It involves a, a tremendous uh, um, amount of pain at times, as well as, as wondrous pleasures, um, you know, those ups and downs. And just about everything in between yada involves a, a lifetime of constant learning and, and growing intimacy. Okay, number two, uh, this uh, secret of relationship is to um, teach your children well. Uh, the, the second aspect of uh, Abraham's Shema lifestyle is often translated as, as teaching one's children and household the ways of, of the Lord. The word often uh, translated as uh, he will teach is the Hebrew word yet zaveh. Um, uh, it's a, a future tense uh, version of the Hebrew verb root zava, uh, zaid, vav, he, the three letters here of, of Hebrew. And often uh, this word is translated into English as command, but is, uh, but it, it, is this a proper rendering? Uh, let's uh, look a little deeper into what this Hebrew word is. Zava um, uh, is um, like all the Hebrew verb roots. Um, there's a, a, a picture. Remember, um, the Hebrew started out as a uh, as pictures. Um, um, the words escaping me now, right now. Um, but uh, but we're we're being painted a picture here with this uh, um, this word here, a mural, so to speak. The, uh, with the, the letters. The first image in, in this particular mur mural is uh, the Hebrew word, uh, uh, is letter Zaid, which makes what we in English would think of as a Z, uh, tz. it was TZ uh, sound. Um, and this letter is, is a picture of a, uh, of a man prostrating himself in, in submission to God. And, and receiving, uh, in consequence, the, the Lord's hand of blessing upon and then empowering uh, that person's life. It's a, a picture of imparted righteousness. Uh, so it's kind of the, the right standing. This, this man enjoys uh, a right standing before the Lord in which he uh, allows, uh, God allows him to receive blessings and empowerment uh, from, from his, his spirit. It's not inherent in the man. Uh, the man does There's nothing that comes out of the man. It's all given, imparted to him by by God. Nor is it. It's not earned by by deeds. It flows from uh, uh, the attitude of of submitting uh, 
uh, to God. Um, and so the, this man is, is prostrating himself, surrendering to God uh, his will and, and all his ways, his actions. The second image in the, the mural is, in question here is the, the Hebrew letter Vav, which is, in this case makes what we know in English as a V sound. And this letter is a picture of a, a connecting device. It's like a, a nail or a peg with which one connects one thing, a, a picture frame or, a, 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 for instance, to a, a, note, to a wall. Um, and, um, and you'll see that a lot in Hebrew that really, I think, gives them a, uh, uh, points to Jesus being nailed to the tree, nailed to the cross. But the final image uh, of this word, is uh, pictograph, is, is that of a, the Hebrew letter He. Uh, and we've run across that, remember, when Abram's name was changed to Abraham. The He was introduced, and that's the, uh, the He, uh, Yahweh. Uh, it's almost like God was imparting a part of himself, giving a letter over to uh, Abraham, so to speak. But this letter, hey, uh, which uh, um, in English sounds like what I've just said, the hey, the H kind of sound. This letter is a, a picture of a, a window into, into a tent, a portal, a door. Um, it's kind of like a, a two-way vision. Um, well, like last week, the, the, the Abraham was sitting in the hot of the day, at the entrance, the portal into his, his tent. It's, uh, it's something outside an individual to be seen from inside. So, so looking out and, and, and looking into something wonderful or something deeper. And it allows something um, inside an individual to be seen from the outside as well. So it's a, an opening up. Uh, it's like letting, again, letting fresh air into a tent. Uh, so the, the Hebrew word zavah is, is, is a promise of, of God that he will, um, he will um, place his righteous standing on, on us, that, that uh, which we, we know is righteousness. Um, um, well, it, it's, I think it's a, a great picture of Jesus, that he died on the cross for us, so he imparts um, the victory of the cross on us. We didn't... Uh, win this on our, our own. This righteousness was given to us as a free gift of grace from God. And so that's the, kind of the source of revelation and, and inspiration comes from God. The, the source of revelation, inspiration, um, um, that, that's in question about uh, Abraham here, I believe, is... is uh, um, it's kind of this, this revelation. How did, what's, what's Abraham's secret? It's, uh, it's uh, this deep relationship. It's um, the, this, uh, the, the, the teaching, the receiving of, of God's word. It's uh, opening a heart and mind to, to, to let God look in us and us to look into the, the truth of God. Uh, the Lord says in, in the passage under the study that, that he has known Abraham and made himself known to Abraham. That, that's that tent opening kind of idea uh, for a specific purpose um, uh, in order that he might uh, teach his children and his household after him um, uh, uh, and that they may uh, that these children may keep the way of the Holy One that's what God says this is what this relationship's about it's a, it's not just an individual relationship there, there's something about uh, imparting what we have received from God to our children, to our grandchildren, to the, to the ones who come after us. Um, is it possible that what the, the Lord is saying in, in our, our scripture today, that Abraham, Abraham's destiny and purpose in life, uh, his special function for which he's been prophetically empowered uh, by the words of, of God has, has that spoken over him is to bring about in, in the lives of his children and in the lives of all those who join themselves to the household, um, what the, the Hebrew verb zavah pictures, an, an, an imputation of, of righteous standing. Is it possible that, that the Lord is saying that as uh, um, an extent of, of Abraham's response to the prophetic empowerment of, of God, Abram will 
live a life and, and will so interact with others in, in the course of, of life that, that his children and all the members of his household will be drawn to that which leads men to, um, uh, to, to receive um, his righteousness. And I think that's the case. Um, uh, Abram is, is, in a sense, the, the beginning for us, for our, our faith. To um, Abraham uh, was said to be one who believed. He had, had, the, had the faith. Uh, and that's what, um, he, in a sense, God designed him to do, to impart that teaching, that knowledge to us as well, to, to walk in faith. And, and uh, not by merit, but by, by the faith of trusting in God's promise. It, it's, uh, I think, what uh, Abram is intended to do. Is, uh, I think that's why he's called a father of multitudes, as our, our scriptures tell us. That, uh, um, and, and, you know, um, our English Bibles told us that, that, that Abraham believed God and, and, uh, and God cre- uh, credited to him as righteousness. And we've also learned when we, we studied that passage that from a Hebraic perspective, believing God um, has nothing to do with, with uh, forming a, a belief system, a, a doctrinal thesis, or a, a systematic theology, but instead has to do with uh, adopting a, a bridal orientation towards God, letting Him lead in the dance, so to speak, of life, receiving whatever He, he gives um, us and 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 uh, kind of dwell on that, nurture that, let that be our nutrients, so to speak, and let it, uh, that that we respond to the God who initiates uh, things within us. Um, so that lifestyle of Shema, of listening to God's word, obeying, walking in, in in God's way, is what Abraham's children and his household are are uh, drawn to. Uh, the Zava um, aspect of the, the Shema lifestyle, Abraham, though, is sometimes called uh, teaching or commanding, and it has little, if anything, to do with any currently recognized form of, of public ministry and, and teaching lifestyle that, um, that goes on, and in, in especially, I think, in uh, many American churches. Um, it, it's, it's relational. It's... it's uh, it's no accident that our scriptures talk to us about uh, giving us the name the bride of Christ. It's not classroom instruction, so certainly that can happen, and I guess we're doing that now. But the, the intimacy, the, the knowing of God, the, the going back into the Garden of Eden, uh, of making all creation right again, involves uh, something much different and, and, and it's much more demanding than and public speaking, and involves uh, instead it, this this tough process of, of ne- negotiating the places in life where where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, uh, in in a God honoring way. Um, um, and, um, it, it's in a sense what I I'm, I see happening here. What God is trying to help us understand, I believe, is that. You know, life happens. Life is hard sometimes. And um, and we've got to respond to these difficult things. You know, our car breaks down, our uh, our bank account runs out. You know, how do we respond? How do we live with these day-to-day crisis or day-to-day things that continue to call, uh, call to our attention? And the idea here is that God said, I'm going to... Uh, give you, empower you, Abraham, you and your children, the generations to come, had to deal with those things in, in a godly way, to respond to them in the, the promptings that, that I give you, not to, not to throw up your hands, not to throw fits, not to, not to respond in an ungodly way, but to, to deal with these problems, uh, whether it be in marriages, businesses, finances, interpersonal relationship with children, uh, uh, friends, family, whatever it may be. Uh, the Lord is uh, is desiring to refine our character and correct and, and discipline us in, in our errors, and we're going to err, um, uh, uh, to, but to help us move in the right directions in these day-to-day things, uh, day-to-day life, 
uh, it's the Lord's discipline that uh, intend to, to bless us and, and then eventually bring uh, as, as families, as individuals and families are healed to bring a nation into, into the light of God's truth as well. That's kind of the, the picture that we have, the Hebraic picture drawn for us by, by the words of Ah, uh, uh, of an imputation uh, of righteous standing occurs not because of what we say, but because in day, day in, day out, uh, our, our children, when children uh, and households see the person submitting each area of, of his life. So we are an example, like Abraham's an example for us that um, in his day-to-day -day dealings, that he's submitting his life, and that's what we show our children and grandchildren as well, us uh, submitting every area of our life to God. Uh, to, to see his, uh, you remember that word shalom, to see his peace um, and his blessing which results from being drawn towards him, that, that we submit ourselves toward him. Uh, the second secret of, of Abraham's relationship with God then, um, uh, the Zavah principle is a principle of, of uh, 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 I'm going to say, this is maybe not a great word, a contagion. Uh, that, that we transfer um, what we've learned to, to those um, in, our, in our path, that, that, um, um, that we infect people with holiness, that God is, is uh, as He is working on our hearts. That, that uh, if you remember last Sunday, um, I think it was, I said that you know, God's sloppy with His blessings uh, in, in a joking way that... Uh, when he, he blesses you, if people are around you, it's going to splash on them. So that's, this is the kind of idea that's being brought up here in our, our uh, the secrets that's being revealed. Abraham's relationship with God was not just a, a personal thing. Um, you know, we hear that a lot, my, uh, my faith is personal. I, I get where that's coming from, but there's a point here that we're reading in Scripture it's not just a personal thing. Uh, it's, it molds and shapes us in, in intimate, person, interpersonal ways, of course. But it also needs to be coming out of us. It needs to be uh, infectious uh, to those who are, are around us. And I'll have to find a better word sometime, but that's a, a good one for now. And perhaps more importantly, um, it, it, lost none of, it, it loses none of its power. When, when God empowers us, um, that power that we transfer to, to others as they watch us in this submitting lifestyle, it, it um, goes to them. And, and you think about, um, sometimes we talk about inheritance, that uh, um, it kind of lessens as, as it goes down the line. Well, that doesn't happen here. The, the power that uh, Abraham received is the power that his children can receive as well. All right, what's the number three secret? Uh, keeping the way of, of God. The, the third aspect of Abraham's friendship with God is to, um, to, uh, is to keep. The Hebrew word is shamar. So um, if you really get into deep studies of um, uh, the Old Testament and uh, you get into the Hebrew words, shema, listening, um, and shamar, are two words that you're going to run into all the time to, to, to Shema. And again, I'm listening is such a, a weak translation that and we've talked about this in the past studies. But a, a listening, a Shema, to keep the way of God to do righteousness and justice. There are a number of ways a, a, a man or a woman can keep. Uh, a man or a woman can, for instance, keep, uh, and um, let me kind of expand this idea of, of uh, keeping. It's to treasure, to cherish, to safeguard, to defend, and to cling to. The way uh, of, of um, it's human nature, the way, the way that, that merely responds fleshly to fleshly appetites, uh, that which he or she thinks is in his, his or her heart is right, this first way that, that men can keep and teach their children to keep is the essence of, of naturalism or humanism. It's a fleshly teaching. Now, obviously, Abraham is called to do, uh, to move into the spiritual realm, to, to, uh, to keep God's word, to, to keep it, uh, uh, to treasure it, to, 
um, to keep it that way. Um, uh, so a, a man or a woman who, who desires more than the way of, of uh, human nature, the flesh, and, 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 keep the, uh, and wants to do more than keep a philosophy or a creed or a cause, uh, um, as good as some of those can be, they're not the best. It, it's just, uh, it, it pales in comparison to the keeping the ways of the Lord. Um, and so th this, uh, this approach uh, of life uh, um, is, um, is, is, is good. It, um, it, well, it's more than good. As we, we move into the things of God, we're, we're saying as good as, as volunteering is, and, and do keep volunteering, I'm not saying that's it, but that's not your end-all, be-all. It's the things of God that are. It's not our. Uh, it's not emotional appeal. It's not uh, mental rhetoric. It's it's a. Uh, it's not keeping the ways of humanity, um, and um, uh, it's it's much more than that. It's keeping um, the, the essence of God. A, a man and a woman who desire more than either the human way of nature, philosophies, creeds, um, and, and even keeping religion. If, if if their approach is um, a relationship with God, a, a spiritual, uh, there, there's a spiritual component to, to it, um, that, that the, the philosophies that might be good kind of get restructured in, in a relationship, a deep relationship with the Lord. Um, and, and, and I know I'm kind of getting into the weeds here, but just this, this idea of, of keeping the teachings of God is, is, is big. It's a, um, um, it, it's a higher way. Um, uh, the, the way of the, the, the Scripture, the way of the Holy One is, is, a, is a higher way, and, it, and, and um, it involves submitting everything in life one's fleshly desires, um, one's fleshly needs. Uh, it, it involves turning over intellect. Um, a, a lot of people do, um, are very proud of their education, their intellect, their thinking capabilities. That's not going to get you into a relationship with, with God. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but there comes a point where God asks you to submit, to submit even your intellect, or maybe lack thereof in my case. Um, um, uh, letting go of emotions, letting go of one's political and, and so, uh, social and psychological opinions and ideas and, and, and uh, one's um, spiritual conditions. Uh, um, the, the keeping of, of God's ways is not a philosophy or a creed. Uh, it's not really a religion. It's instead a, a total all-out surrender to the, the will and the spoken word of God. To, to keep, to shamar, um, Adonai, uh, is to, to walk through life on a, on a pathway in which uh, the Lord leads, uh, leads is, is shamaying. Uh, again, we'll, we'll continue to hear this in the Genesis story, this listening to God, um, uh, paying attention to his voice, listening for his voice, waiting on um, his instruction listening carefully to these instructions and then willfully receiving with gladness and embracing these instructions and, and, and then and also embracing the prophetic empowerment that's inherent in, in Shema and Shamar uh, because they're, 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 um, they're, they're light, uh, light to our feet. Um, so I think I'll stop here today because this is a, a lot and I was having a little time, a difficult time trying to explain some of these things and so I might have to go back and, and re-watch this and you never know, I may take this down and try to, to, to fix some of this but uh, I hope the, the Lord used some of it to uh, help you. Uh, this is, um, God is calling us into a, a deep relationship to, to let go of the superficial, to let go of um, maybe the traditions that we have even in our, our services um, at, at church, that uh, those services are intended um, to drive us to a, a deep relationship with God. That's what God's looking for. All right, I'll stop there.
I hope you have a great week and look forward to seeing you Sunday either at church or on the internet. Blessings. Bye now.